I won't attend your wedding, because it's a waste of money for me to give you gift money. On the day of the wedding, I received a sudden phone call from my sister, Emma. I sigh without thinking. She has always been demeaning to me, since we were young. However, she doesn't know the truth. Um, I'm sorry to say this, but... I decided to tell my sister a certain truth. My name is Amy King. I have a younger sister who is two years younger than me. Emma, my sister, was very cute, and had such a well-defined face that, even I, her older sister, honestly thought she was cute. If it was just her face, she would be as good as any celebrity out there. However, this girl had the worst personality. She has used her cuteness, to flatter everyone around her, and make them pamper her since she was a child. She has a personality that can't be satisfied, unless she is the best. I, on the other hand, look nothing like Emma. I have slanted eyes with single eyelids, and straight black hair, and she used to make fun of me by saying. You look like a cursed Japanese doll. I tried my best to be friendly, but my sharp eyes and blank face, didn't give others a good impression of me. People around me only loved Emma. My parents also loved her more than me, and tried to make me use Emma's hand-me-downs. As we got older, the gap between us widened, and eventually, I had no place in our home. However, there was one saving grace for me. You're really cute, Amy. Aunt Kate was my mother's sister, and she cared for me a lot. She often invited me to her house, because she couldn't bear to see me, not being cared for by my family. I'm not pretty at all. That's not true. You are a very pretty girl, Amy. I was able to grow up without being cynical, thanks to Aunt Kate. Telling me I was cute and pretty. Aunt Kate's daughter Sarah, is also a very nice girl, and loved me like a real sister. My aunt's husband is also a very kind and gentle man. If it wasn't for my aunt and her family, I would have become delinquent a long time ago. However, one day, after entering high school, and beginning to think about going to university. Oh, I forgot to tell you this, but you can't go to university. Huh? I want to put the money towards Emma's university education. We can't afford to send you to university. When my mother suddenly said this to me, all I could do was stand there in a daze. At that moment, I felt that I was clearly confronted with the fact that, I was an unimportant child to my parents. I later graduated from high school, and got a job at a general company. Emma, on the other hand, went on to a so-called F. Frank University, and spent four years playing around. After graduation, she lived from one part-time job to another. I have a full-time job, but she looked down on me, saying. You a low-educated person, who couldn't go to university. It's your fault I couldn't go to university. I wanted to say that, but ever since I can remember, she has been in a superior position, and I couldn't say it back to her face. My sister will continue to make fun of me for years to come. I accepted that reality and continued to live in despair. However, one day ten years after I graduated from high school, hope was born in the days that had been full of hopelessness. My boyfriend, whom I had been dating, proposed to me, and we decided to get married. He knew all about my family situation growing up, and accepted me wholeheartedly. I will never meet such a wonderful person again. Of course, I readily accepted his proposal. We spent a lot of time together, looking for a wedding venue and choosing a dress, which was very happy. As if to put a damper on that happy time, I received a call from my parents. Come see us before you get married. That's just the polite thing to do. My mother told me so, and I reluctantly headed to my parents' house alone. I hadn't been back since I graduated from high school. The fact that I was getting married, was also reported on late notice. We didn't even meet each other, as I didn't want him to feel bad. They seemed to be very upset about it. You don't give a shit about me. They don't feel like congratulating me on getting married, or feeling happy about it at all. They just called me out because they care about how people see them. When I went home for the first time in a long time, it seems to be filled with a dark mood somehow. Also, the inside of the house looks a bit disorganized too. I'm here. What's with the tone? Since no one greeted me at the door, I made my way to the living room, 
and my mother glared at me, and said it. My father glanced at me for a moment, but then turned his gaze back to the television, as if nothing had happened. I sigh heavily. I informed you that I was getting married, over the phone, didn't I? You don't have to call me out here. That's not how it works. Isn't your partner with you here today? No, there's no way I'm bringing him in. How could we possibly meet you face to face? It seemed to have been conveyed to my mother, without saying it out loud that, you guys are like that. She contorted with rage. The moment, she was about to shout at me. Oh, you were back, sis. Welcome back. I was interrupted by her uncareful voice. Oh, Emma is back. You finished your work now? Yeah, it was only a morning shift. Mom, I'm hungry. Okay, I'll make something to eat then. She smiled at me with a cute face, and started talking, as if nothing had happened. I heard you are getting married, congratulations, sis. Ah, thank you. It's almost the first time, I've had a normal conversation with her like this, and I get a little defensive. Well, I never thought that you would get married. I didn't even know you were dating. You could have told me. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, not much can be expected, from your partner. She speaks badly with a smile. I mean, why are you getting married before me? Did you pay money, and ask him to get married? Huh? That's obviously what happened. Otherwise, how could someone like you, get married? Her smile disappeared, and her cute face twisted with jealousy. The man must be just out of curiosity. He must be an ugly man with a low income, have nothing special, be dirty, short, and fat, right? That's not true. Shut up. Who will celebrate your marriage? Neither I nor mom, nor dad will celebrate your marriage, even a little bit. When she said that, she poured what was in the mug, and she was holding over me. Ha ha ha. You look good in dirty clothes. Emma, don't mess up the floor anymore. Okay, sorry, mom. That was coffee inside a mug, and I have some brown stains on my clothes. Even so, my mother seemed more worried about the floor, than me. I couldn't take it any longer, and silently left the house. They are not my family. I held my tears back, and hurried back to the house. Then, on the day of the wedding, while I was busy getting ready, I suddenly received a phone call from Emma. Hello? Oh, good morning, sis. Sorry for calling you out of the blue. I could see that, she had a nasty smile on her face, which I could clearly see, even on the phone. It's your wedding today, but I'm going to miss it, because it's a waste of money for me to give you gift money. I'm sorry, I suddenly have to make an empty seat. The other people will wonder, why the bride's family seat is empty. Oh yeah, dad and mom won't attend either. Emma laughed gleefully and vulgarly. Listening to that laughter, and I try to think. I wonder if she doesn't know anything. Well, I'm sorry to say this. Presumably, my parents haven't told her anything. So instead, I decided to tell her the truth. May I ask who is calling? My sister passed away five years ago. There was confusion in Emma's voice over the phone. What are you talking about? You're my sister. No, my sister isn't you. My sister is Sarah King, Kate Andy's daughter. That girl is my real sister. What are you talking about? Have you lost your mind? As expected, she didn't know anything. So I decided to explain everything carefully from scratch. I was adopted by Aunt Kate five years ago. What? Yes, I was adopted by my aunt and uncle after Sarah died of illness. At first, I proposed to become their adopted child, to fill the loneliness of my aunt and uncle, who lost their only daughter, due to an incurable disease. They have treated me like a real daughter, since I was young. Not only were they kind, but they also scolded me, when I did something wrong. Although, my parent-child relationship with my birth parents continues, because I am a regular adoptee. I consider my aunt, to be my real mother. You said, you were going to miss my wedding, but I didn't have a seat for you in the first place. What? Because Sarah is the only sister I have. Besides, I mean, how dare you try to come? when I didn't even send you an invitation. You are so conceited. Ugh. And by the way, 
my partner doesn't fit any of the characters, you described it all. Well, that's just sour grapes. You know him well too. Henry Davis, that's the person who I'm marrying. What the heck? Emma made a dumb noise, and I almost laughed. Well, it's understandable to be surprised. He was the person she has always liked. A person like Emma, who only goes for good-looking guys, has always liked him so much, so it's obvious to say that he is a good-looking guy. I even wonder if it's okay for me to walk next to him. I met him through our common hobby of reading. We became friends, when we were in elementary school. Then, we both became the student library assistants, and got along very well. I knew that Emma liked him, so I kept my relationship with him hidden. Even though, Emma didn't know that, she seemed to have been making a move on him for a long time, but he, who had heard about her from me, of course refused her confession. Ugh, no way. And by the way, my mother, your Aunt Kate, lent you more than half of the money for your university education. You should be grateful. What? Recently, repayment has been overdue, so she said she would hire a lawyer and demand payment. It's better to pay her back before it becomes a big issue. After hearing all the truth from me, she couldn't say anything, and remained silent. However, I know Anna well, because we've been together for a long time. She must be frozen, because she can't accept the truth that her sister, whom she had always thought of as lower ranked, was actually higher ranked than her. Well, I'm busy. I'll hang up. Without waiting for her reply, I hung up, and resumed preparations for a happy wedding. Later, the lawyer hired by Aunt Kate, contacted my parents, and they seem to have changed their attitude towards Emma. It's your fault, I'm in debt. Pay it back responsibly. Emma tried to repay the debt, by working more part-time jobs, but it was still not enough. She tried working in the sex industry, where she could earn good money, but got hooked on a host, recommended by other sex workers. Then she ended up increasing her debt instead. Emma and her family were unable to live on the repayments, so her mother even asked me for help. How dare you think I will lend you money? That's my mother's money. Oh, by the way, when I say mother, I mean Auntie Kate, not you. Also, I don't want to take on your debt. So I'm going to abandon inheritance. Just stay away from me. I quickly proceeded with the disinheritance procedure, then I was able to cut off ties with that family, almost completely. I regret that, I should have done this earlier. From now on, only Aunt Kate's family is my real family. Together with Henry, who has become my husband, I hope we can continue to live happily as a real family. Last New Year's Day, it snowed for the first time in several years. In the silver world that is rarely seen in the city, I returned home and gathered together with my family. For ordinary people, it would be a moment of excitement. However, I was walking down the road leading to my parents' house with heavy steps. Many relatives must have gathered. Even through the front door, I could hear lively laughter. Mixed in amongst them are the high-pitched voices of my father, whom I hate even though he is my biological father, and my sister. When I heard their voices, painful memories from my childhood emerged. It's okay, I rang the intercom while telling myself that. A middle-aged man who was probably a relative talked to me. I can't believe Sally has become such a beautiful woman. I can't remember his face or name, but he talked to me. Perhaps the word, beautiful, bothered my sister, and she glared at me sharply. My name is Sally, I am 27 years old. My sister Maya has looked down on me since I was a child, and she has a bossy personality who always wants her to be the center of attention. But, you've gained weight, haven't you? You used to brag about your figure and wear less clothes, even in winter. Now you're so chubby and look like a pig. When she laughed scornfully, the man awkwardly bowed to me and poured me a drink. I'm used to it by now, but I wish they would at least refrain from swearing at a table like this. My family is reasonably wealthy for a reason, so there are many guests other than relatives, and the living room is large. That's why I have not seen my father, who seems to get completely drunk, until now and came to me with a bottle of sake. Hey! What are you doing there sitting around like a guest? 
Serve at least everyone some sake. Even though I've been helping out with lots of things since I arrived, such as taking the empty dishes away, cleaning them, and bringing out the beer bottles. He is still trying to get me to help out, although I haven't seen him in a few years. He hasn't even let my sister help him prepare for this party, which shows how much difference there is in his love for us. However, compared to a few years ago, before I learned makeup that suits me, it seems to be better. Don't join us because it will ruin the taste of booze. He even told me not to attend. Even if the relatives try to calm him down, saying, take it easy, then we are now getting told off. You abandoned your hometown, or even if you get a job in the city, you're just being exploited by a rogue company. He says that regardless of whether he was drunk or not. He snorted and walked away from us, and he stood in front of people who were enjoying themselves with drinks and food. He began boasting about his family and sister, as always. They looked at each other with annoyed, wry smiles on their faces, as if to say if he was talking about it again, while listening to his story. However, this time it was slightly different from usual. My sister took her first step as a female doctor after finishing her internship period. Even those who were tired of hearing about my sister's spectacular career, were happy to hear the news. Although we usually hate each other, I was happy about this good news. When I turned to my sister to congratulate her, she said, contrary to my expectations, something unexpected. Of course. I'm different from a failure like you. As I was taken aback by my sister's words, father got a good laugh out of what she said. That's right. You are good for nothing. Get out of here because you ruined this happy occasion. Don't ever step foot in this house again. The guests, who had been enjoying themselves until then, went into stony silence when they heard his heartless words. Who ruined the occasion? These two have always been like this. They boast about their family background and look down on others simply because they have been doctors for generations. The reason my mother decided to divorce was because of him, and my sister, who was influenced by him, began to mock at my mother. I suddenly remembered my childhood. My sister and I were educated from a young age on the assumption that we would become doctors like our father and his sisters. On the other hand, we looked down on our mother and treated her like a housekeeper. She was not a doctor but just an ordinary housewife who had a part-time job. According to what my relatives once told me, my mother married my father after he tried to get her attention. However, as soon as I was born, he started to treat her in such a way that he completely underestimated that she would never get divorced. My mother tried to convince my sister, who no longer saw herself as a parent, many times, but my sister did not listen. Shortly before I started junior high school, my mother made a decision. If things continued as they were, my sisters and I would never find what we really wanted to do instead of being doctors, and we would become heartless people who looked down on other people who were not doctors. That's why she thought about getting a divorce. He was upset by the divorce papers my mother presented to him. He never thought that he, a doctor, would be asked for a divorce. He convinced her that if she ceased to be a doctor's wife, she would not be able to live as she had before. Still, she remained unmoved and only demanded custody and child support from us. She went to court, demanding only custody of us and child support. As a result, it seems that custody passed to my father for financial reasons. My mother apologized to us for not being able to get custody, but only my sister continued to despise our mother until the end, saying, I don't want to live in poverty, so I'm glad to live with my dad. During the trial, father hired an excellent lawyer regardless of expense and, as a result, he won custody. He must have wanted very much to raise us as doctors. With my mother gone, he gave more harsh criticism to me who had no interest in medicine. I have always loved cute clothes and dolls since I was a child, but my father didn't buy me anything because I didn't study medicine even though I had good grades at school. Only my sister who studied medicine could get anything she wanted, so sometimes she purposely asked him to buy something that I wanted and came to me to show off. 
My father gradually stopped talking to me, who didn't aspire to study medicine, and ended up telling me nasty things along with my sister. I made up my mind around the time I became a high school student. I decided to cut ties with my father and my sister after graduation and leave the countryside to Tokyo. However, my father said he wouldn't support any of my university expenses, so I decided to do something about it myself. Then I decided to work as a private tutor relying on relatives. Fortunately, my grades were good and the school I entered was the best in the area. On top of that, the grades of the children of relatives I taught improved significantly. It became popular and I was able to earn 80,000 yen per month by working on weekends while studying. This would cover the initial cost of the university, tuition fees, and moving expenses. Just as I was thinking that, my father told me something ridiculous. He wanted me to give my sister 30,000 yen out of my monthly income of 80,000 yen. I tried to fight the harassment of my father and sister, but was told that if I refused, they would expel me from school, so I had no choice but to comply. After graduation, my savings were used up by university expenses and renting a cheap apartment. I miss it now that I am successfully independent, but at the time it was a real struggle. I glanced at the two people who were still laughing loudly at me and stood up. All right. My husband will be here soon so we'll just say hello and leave. At my words, the expressions of the people who had been awkwardly silent until then, lit up. Oh Sally is married? Starting with Aunt's voice, questions such as who is your partner? When did you get married? Are asked in rapid succession. Despite the smiling faces of those who congratulated me, my sister's expression was horrendous. She looks okay, but because of her strong personality and tendency to look down on others, even when she does get together with someone, they break up within a few months. I think one reason why my sister looks down on me is because she is jealous that she can't get a boyfriend herself. If she changes her personality, a good person will surely turn up too. I'm sorry. I wanted to greet you properly, but I'm late. Everyone looked surprised when they saw my husband who arrived late. Although he has an ordinary face, he looked very cool because he was wearing clothes coordinated by me. My husband's name is Ken and he is 35 years old and slightly older than me. However, my father was surprised, not because I brought my husband with me, but because he heard his name, Ken, and looked stunned. You married a doctor? Yes, he is a doctor. My father still clings to his position as a doctor even though he has retired, so he can tell by name, apparently. However, it was my sister who got angry first when she heard that news. I won't allow you to get married before me. Also, he's such a handsome guy. My father got back to reality and ordered me and Ken in an arrogant manner. Basically, he told me to give Ken to my sister because he is not suitable for me who didn't become a doctor. He insisted, and ignoring Ken's thoughts and the fact that we were already married, as I told him at the beginning, I thought it was pointless to deal with him and decided to leave this place quickly. When I went to the front door with my husband, my father and sister persistently followed us with frustrated looks on their faces. Then, from behind my back, they both verbally hurled heartless words at me, you are not worthy. I didn't want to say anything back, but I was made to feel bad at the beginning of the new year, so I opened my mouth immediately. Don't worry, we won't come here again. Why don't you worry about yourselves? Both my sister and father rolled their eyes and froze, as if they didn't expect me to talk back. It is true that both of them worked hard and became excellent doctors. However, they would not concede that their own treatment was absolute and would be mud if you told them you had gone for a second opinion. Therefore, my father has been known to have a bad reputation and the hospital where my sister works has received terrible reviews by word of mouth. It is good that they became doctors, 
but the hospital where my sister works is apparently loss-making, so I doubt if they will continue to employ her, as she has high labor costs and a bad reputation among patients. My sister, who is very proud, was very angry at my words and seemed to be thinking of something to say back. But before she could, I said something that could be heard in the sitting room, where relatives were peering anxiously at us. I'm going to give birth in the early summer. But I won't have to see you guys anymore. As my sister said earlier, I was rather skinny not so long ago, but today I'm wearing more clothes because I don't want my stomach to get cold. At that moment, my father was in a panicked frenzy. Even he seemed to get excited when he heard about his grandchild. Hey, hey, I'll come and see you when the baby is born. Give me your address. However, Ken refused with a disgusted face, so he got mad. My sister couldn't believe that I was even pregnant, rather than married. She was surprised, with her mouth open and closed like a fish. I felt like laughing because he didn't even look at his beloved daughter and only clung to us. You have my sister, dad. I said as I left home, where we would never come again. After that, there was a phone call on my mobile phone from my father, who had never called me before. Of course, I rejected the call and I will stay away from him. Later, a friend of my sister's told me that she had registered with a marriage agency and was already bragging that she was a doctor. She was laughing at the idea that it probably wouldn't work. I've contacted my mother and we are going to buy some stuff I need together today. Although we were always treated badly by my sister and father, I think we were able to give them a little bit of payback in the end.